find the banner. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the Rockies, oh, Lambert, that should be Lambert. We already got off to a poor start here. Uh, Lambert going for the Rockies and Irvin for the Nationals. That's Jake Irvin. I know these guys. Okay. <laughs> They've been around once or twice. All these Irvins. Right now I'm showing the Nationals $1.35. Nine and a half over 15 as Canada finds the back of the net. Gold, 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 gold. <laughs> I feel like that was a little lackluster, Ramon. You could have well, done that. I, I did want to interrupt uh, the <laughs> baseball handicapping. And... The whole theme of things. Uh, all right. Did I lose you? Did I lose you? Oh, no. Am I? Oh, there you went. There you went. It was like you were, I, I thought you were talking, but n nothing was. Uh, oh happening on my side glitch in the matrix i thought i could hear nothing so i was worried that you got uh, hung up there no, i hope not you're good you're good you're good all right uh, yep so irvin here a dollar 35 nine and a half over 15 yeah this one's been uh, interesting so far a little high scoring action in this one uh, I kind of like the Rockies yesterday. I think I'm going to go back on them here again today. I'll take the Rockies. Uh, well, I had like one and a half yesterday. Uh, but with the Rockies, I'll take them on the money line here today. Uh, I kind of feel like, you know, Irvin, statistically, if you look at him overall, probably has the, the better ERA. But if I take a look at some of these splits, that's where it kind of comes into play. Where it looks like Lambert, even though he only has like 20 innings pitched, uh, so half of what Jake Irvin has done this season, his ERA is 2.79 on the road. So he's actually been uh, doing pretty well. Also has more Ks per nine inning than Jake Irvin. Also allows less base runners than Jake Irvin. Uh, so there's a lot of that going on. I kind of feel like that uh, Lambert, I'm going to give him a chance here. And the Rockies and Nationals are only scoring about four runs a piece right now. Uh, so I think it might come down to this bullpen. Rockies have the better bullpen right now, too. 4.71 compared to 4 point or 5.47. So take it the Rockies to start this one off here today. We had uh, a premium consensus play between you and I in this one. This was our baseball winner yesterday. Yes. Mindy, we had the over with the Rockies and the Nationals. I like the Rockies with you today with Lambert. Uh, yeah, he's a reliever for the most part, but uh, he has a little bit of uh, wear to him. He has made two starts now and uh, eight scoreless innings in his two starts. So uh, probably kind of an opener. Maybe he can go a little deeper too. Uh, hasn't been great against Washington, but uh, Irvin, a five and a half ERA in his last three starts. Washington has lost nine of his 14 starts this season. Nationals, of course, uh, playing pretty decent right now, but Colorado, uh, maybe their best stretch. I don't know. <laughs> Winning six <laughs> of ten uh, right now. It feels like this is about as good as Colorado's been right now. So uh, usually, you know, when you get on them, you're, you're not riding a winning streak or anything, but here with Colorado, at least, uh, the road hasn't been good. Let's face it, to Colorado. They've lost 14 of their last 18 on the road. But uh, I'm going to try Colorado with you here. All right. All right. He says take the Nats team total over. Thomas Lewis is on the over in this one. Fernando's on the Nationals. He also may be leaning over. Bionic on the Rockies. Hot boy says go over in this one. Jacoby says let's try the Rockies. Why not? And uh, we will. Let's get this show started with uh, Colorado here on the road. Getaway day. <laughs> These day games got to come out and steal it. That's right. A good plane ride wherever you're going next. <laughs> Solo on the Nats, Colorado for Buttersky. All right, the Marlins and the Rays also in that noontime Eastern block here. The Rays, a big favorite with uh, Eflin against Alcantara. And Alcantara is just a, you know, he's a mediocre pitcher. What can you say? Geez, I guess, Ramon, he's been challenging for me to back uh 
you know, all season. He did show a little bit of signs of life last game out. I mean, he held the Phillies down, but the Phillies haven't exactly been, you know, lights out. He's held the Orioles down. So that's maybe a little bit more uh, impressive. Had seven strikeouts in his last start. Uh, but yeah, he still has those high ERA numbers. And historically versus the Rays, he only has a 4% K rate. So this isn't the team that he goes up there and just, uh, you know, lights out, demolishes them. So I'm going to go with the Rays. I'm just taking the Rays here on the money line. I know it's sitting at about minus 170, but that Marlins team does have that really good run line record. They're like 22 and eight. So they are always able to keep these games close. Uh, so I'm taking the Rays on the money line. Okay, I'll do it with you. I, you know, I, I don't know if I just didn't uh, didn't mind maybe uh, the run line as well, but uh, let's go ahead and take them on the money line. It's a pretty high, dollar sixty five, no doubt about it. But uh, I'm willing to take the raise in this one with F1 three point three six ERA, Sandy the four point seven seven ERA, and uh, F1 been profitable and sandy hasn't yeah put it in simple to put it in simple <laughs> terms for me i don't know <laughs> right Make it easy for me uh, but luis will try the marlins here i think the marlins will be popular because of this price i think that's the way that people were looking at yesterday's game as well with uh glass no uh you know he was like a two dollar favorite i think by the time the game started but uh, Miami was no match for him yesterday, quite frankly. Dre, Tampa Bay, run line, first five. Solo says go over in this one. Mm. Uh, yesterday I uh, was a, a under. I know that I had the under as a premium in, this, in that game. And uh, I don't know, runs could be difficult. Hot boy raising under. That might be our... My picks right there. Butterscotch likes the over, though. Marlins can't hit. Hello, Miguel. Rays money line, he says. Thomas will be on the Rays. Fernando Rays run line. Hello to Tyrone. Butterscotch says, look out. This total's already dropping. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> I like Lovely. Well, I like it under, and I was going to go premium, I think, at seven and a half, but I don't know now. But let's take Tampa Bay. Let's go two for two. All right, let's do it. Fernando is just making up his own totals over here, I think, on the game. <laughs> but, you know, maybe he likes over eight and a half and have plus money. I should be fair about that. He, he's been, <laughs> he will do that, and so maybe he that's what he was intending to do. Bionic does like the over. Jacoby likes the Rays. All right. All right. We're on it. We're on the raise. We'll play this price with the raise. Make your computer oh. Oh, your computer oh, fired up finally. Yep. Well, I had a little bit of an issue here. Okay. 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 <laughs> Mariners and Miller uh, here in this one. And our graphics guy had a bad day, it looks like. Okay. God. Mariners with Miller, Twins with Ryan in this one. Uh, this series has been a little goofy as well. That's an understatement, Ramon. Ryan minus a dollar twenty-five, and this total now looks like it's moving up here. Steam did come in on the over. Uh, the runs were coming in late. Uh, now it's eight and a half. Under 15. So that is a rise, however, uh, on the total with the Mariners and the Twins. Yeah, this one uh, series has been, uh, we got bonus coverage both days going into uh, extra innings. So yeah, it was uh, one so far here by this Mariners team and one by the Twins. Uh, but for me, I'm going to go back on the Twins at home. Again, you got Miller on the mound. He does tend to walk a lot of guys, 2.1 per nine innings. Uh, that always concerns me when you uh, 
give this team a chance, this Twins team. They've proven over and over again that they can come back. It's not like they score a lot of runs, uh, but it's getting up there. They're getting closer to, you know, almost five runs per game. Also been uh, having a pretty decent uh, bullpen. I think they just eke this one out here, uh, taking the home team. Okay, I want to do it too. Mindy, I want to take the Twins. Uh, uh, look, I failed yesterday with this matchup. I took the Twins. They were up. They were winning that game, and they were the they ones that ended up with, yeah, with a little bit of a choke job there. So uh, what did I just see here? <laughs> Thomas Lewis is talking about a Tupperware party. I know that. <laughs> Tupperware. I don't know what. Didn't Tupperware? I used to have, well, I mean, I never hosted one, but I used to go to those with my mom, the Tupperware parties. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted one of those things where you could shoot the ball by hitting the. Uh, that was like a Tupperware toy, but the Tupperware didn't they do like one of those GameStop or AMC stock things where you you know that you buy it at like five like. 10 cents and it goes up to like a two dollars. Okay, I don't know what I'm I don't know. Here's Dre says uh, Minnesota money line. And uh oh money Minnesota money line and under. I was like Minnesota money line and understanding. And I'm like, yes, uh, Dre is a very understanding man when he's in our chat. But he meant under. So nobody likes this game, apparently. Many, oh, oh, here it comes. Okay, my chat's a little slow. All right. Uh, here, Thomas. Get you up to speed. Yeah, well. <laughs> Not too many people liking uh, Ryan here today. So I see lots of Mariners hanging out. Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, we might be on our own then, because I do see a lot of Mariners here right now. Uh, probably after, you know, the yeah, they blew it yesterday. So, But Ryan... Still 3.88 ERA. So, uh, Fernando on the Mariners. And also on the under. Okay. <laughs> Tupperware. <laughs> oh, boy. And Luis on Seattle here. We're on Minnesota. We're going to just pick every game, and maybe that'll yeah, work. Okay, right. <laughs> well, I was kind of worried. Uh, like yesterday when, the, you know, like I said, we do our picks, and we only I, we did not end up on very many. Here's Jacoby says go under, so maybe we'll have more today. Next up in these day games too, right? So that's fun. Let's have some right. fun. Let's have some fun with some winners. Latifa, are you out there? <laughs> She's kind of yet? breakfast listening. Okay. <laughs> she made a pick yet? I was wondering. I will say right now, Mindy, I want to just tell everyone, though, if they're going to back us on this. Uh, right now, I mean, this thing is on the move with Minnesota. I I'm talk I know we're on the Guardians now, but uh, right now I'm showing that Minnesota line is definitely on the move, up to as high as a dollar. Thirty-five, a dollar forty. I'm seeing a dollar forty-five at one very square book offshore. So if you're going to ride with Minnesota with us, uh, now would be the time. I uh, just want to say that before we get into the next game. Okay, here's the Royals and the Guardians with uh, Alex Marsh. <laughs> He's uh, uh, so far hasn't been too great. Gavin Williams been okay for the Guardians so far, and now you got a big favorite, of course. But it's down to 190, and the total looks like 10. Oh, this total uh, is dropping big time, uh, Mindy. With these two teams, I would just uh, just seem like under every time right now, and the total has gone all the way. It was there was 10 and a half, but it's down to 10. Oh, stop it! That's how I was going to look at. It. I mean, I kind of think it's more uh, of Gavin Williams holds this Royals team down rather than you know, Alec Marsh out there having like this exceptional game. Uh, I don't know if Alec can go ahead and keep up his uh, four home runs per nine innings average or not. Should not be able to. Uh, so I think that's why I'm looking to the uh, under here as well, Ramon. Okay. Wow. We've got four plays here. That was uh, more than we had on yesterday's card. 
I want to go under in this one. Look, these two teams have been big time unders. Uh, all see, especially Cleveland. It's really Cleveland that's uh, uh, the big time under. So I would just have to think it's going under. I don't know if Jacoby's talking about. Yeah, I think he. No, he's not. That's an eight and a half. So that got to be the last game. Uh, Cleveland run line here for Thomas. And Luis says go under. Dre, though, says he likes the over here. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be up to Marsh. <laughs> I will say yesterday that uh, uh, Tony did have an under in this game yesterday as a premium. Okay. And uh, that was a winner. Good job, Tony. Yep. Coming up with the winners. And Luis said under. And it might have been on his videos. I'm not sure if it was a premium. Here's Butterscotch says Cleveland run line. <laughs> and Bionic Cleveland run line. Not a lot of uh, – doesn't look like a lot of opinion here from the team on this one, Mindy, today. But uh, well, we're I mean, it, is, it is the Royals. I mean, like, it's hard to get excited about the Royals. I'm going to give them a chance here today, I think. I don't know. I don't, probably know. To, I don't know. <laughs> probably have to give me two and a half runs. That's yeah, okay. That's about right. Cleveland is 17 and 33 to the under at home this season. The Royals are uh, 39 and 49 to the under as an underdog, 21 and 30 to the under on the road. So let's go ahead and take the under in this one. How about the Reds and the Brewers? Ben Lively and Freddie Peralta here. We have Peralta minus a dollar thirty-five now and nine under twenty. Yeah, this has been quite the wild one here so far, Ramon. Uh, it's one of those that they almost let that uh, Braves team get back into it. And they kind of did that the game before where uh, the Brewers, did I say Braves, where the Brewers did get back into it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I need to see a little bit more out of the Reds to shut these teams down. And I'm not really seeing that. Like, I kind of feel like they've just gotten by with the skin of their teeth. Uh, yesterday, couldn't quite get it done uh, the day prior. I'm going to go back on the Brewers here today. I think the Brewers, uh, you know, kind of have this series. It looks like they've shown it, uh, but couldn't quite get the hump. And I think it's one of those that the Reds haven't been able to shut these uh, teams down. I see like their uh, bullpen having difficulties. So going with the Brewers today. All right, uh, Mindy goes with the Brewers, and yesterday she had the Reds on the run line, which was a winner. So just to be fair there, uh, took that handicap yesterday as a premium winner for you, Mindy. Uh, I probably, I don't know, I feel like the price might be too high. Maybe I'm going to give the Reds a shot here, but uh, probably end up here on the over in this one at 9 uh, eight and a half was maybe even premium territory, but you know, yesterday, don't be fooled. I mean, yesterday was a really good pitching matchup, Mindy. Uh, I know you like the under in that one, and I wasn't sure, but it certainly with Abbott and Burns yesterday turned out to be exactly what you called for. I'm gonna yeah. take the over here though with Lively and Peralta uh, in this one today. You have, uh, you know, the Brewers have been. Uh, dead solid under for sure of late, so of the Reds. But um, I'm not I, – I think these guys, these pitchers could be in. The steam came rolling in on the under here. It's still <laughs> 9 under 20, but I, I've got the over in this one. Uh, which, you know, Peralta's got a 5 ERA in his last four starts. Lively's been a little bit better, but uh, I'm going to try the over here. Uh, okay. Let's see with the chat. I, I'm sure – uh, let's see what they uh, – Omar Chavez, or Omar Chavez here today, and he's got uh, maybe the Brewers. Here's Luis on the Reds. And Doubles is ready to have Ireland score in this one. This has been a, one of the – I will say this has been uh, not aesthetically pleasing. Well, that first goal in this game was, but this is a pretty thrilling game right now, no doubt, considering most of the uh, games uh, – 
have been one-sided. Like I said, Mindy, this is only the second time both teams have scored. The other 19 (laughs) games have been either shutouts or scoreless draws. Thomas may be here on the Reds. Dre was saying Milwaukee money line. I got that. Here's Bionic on the Reds. Butterscotch says, give me Cincinnati, Milwaukee, first five under. And doubles on the Reds. Miguel Guerra says, give me the Reds on the run line solo on the Reds money line. Okay. And uh, Mindy on the Brewers here. I'll take the over. All right. That's okay. We can't pick them all. Could we? Yeah. All right. Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Another. It's had some crazy, uh, crazy games in the yeah. series this week. Here are the Cardinals on the road. Diamondbacks 145, eight and a half over 20. Yeah, well, it kind of looked like the Cardinals had uh, that game yesterday all the way up till the eighth inning. They were winning one to nothing and then gave up some runs. It looks like there's been, you know, these bullpens just haven't really been coming through for a lot of these teams. They've had nice starting pitching performances, and then suddenly here comes the bullpen, and boom, kind of gets blown up. That's kind of the way I see this one maybe going here again today. Uh, The Cardinals' bullpen has been sluggish, uh, and then – Flaherty, uh, you know, it's one of those that I kind of feel like he hasn't been doing that great on the mound. Uh, he gave up 13 runs in his last uh, four starts. I'm going to go ahead and go back with the Diamondbacks and Zach Gallen here today, even though it's a little bit of uh, an elevated price for me, yeah. minus 125. Uh, that's how I'm going to go here. Yeah, in fact, it's going down. So $1.45 now. Uh, I'm selling some books. I feel better about that. Uh, you know. Pretty good, not bad, but uh, I don't know. This could be a good game here. Cardinals with Flaherty, they've won nine of his uh, last 12 starts with him on the mound. Uh, Gallon, though, 3.32 ERA in his last three starts with Gallon. They've gone nine and one at home. So the uh, problem here is Arizona has been struggling, having lost 13 of their last 18 games uh, now, so Gallon was an original card drafted by the Cardinals, huh. I believe, or at least was a Cardinal there for a while, uh, back a while ago. So, uh, way back. yeah, I'll be uh, let's see here at eight and a half over. That's going to put me on the under in this one. Uh, these two teams have been a little bit more to the uh, – Flaherty's been going over quite a bit, uh, and so have the cards of late. The bats have finally picked up, but Arizona's gone under in five of their last seven games. So it seems the chat wants to do here in this one. And it's going to be Fernando on the Cardinals, and Butterscotch says Arizona money line. Omar on the Cardinales. And uh, I think Thomas is saying this is a nerfy. Yeah. Uh, Arizona on a nerfy. For a gallon, he's allowed a run in the first inning in four of 21 starts. Meanwhile, uh, Flaherty's allowed a first inning run in six of 19 starts. Bionic on the D-backs. Double says, give me Arizona. PZ says, I'm going to get you that intro very, very soon. Oh, thanks, PZ. Nice. <laughs> he didn't say. PZ's on the Cardinals. I'm trying to do a Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mindy had a premium winner yesterday with the – so we both did. We both went under in this game, and I'm going to come back with the under again here. Cardinals and Diamondbacks. Hmm. Solo is raking in the money in the Women's World Cup here. This one, though, is uh, uh, right now the total was three, and it is currently three. We'll see. There's still 15 minutes left here in this one. All right, Jeremy might go with the Diamondbacks. Jacoby not too interested because uh, can't get the Cardinals right. 
No, okay, Peasy. Appreciate you. I'm just te- you're busy. I know. I just <laughs> I'm so impressed by that uh, by that little rap that you gave those guys. All right, and uh, Mindy on the Diamondbacks here, and I'm on the under. All right, Mindy, the Padres are feeling good for a few days, but uh, <laughs> the math just doesn't add up for me when it comes Ooh. unless the Padres can go on a double-digit winning streak somewhere between now and the end of the season. There's just too many other intangibles when you got so many teams ahead of you. Not every team can lose. Sometimes they play each other, and the teams above you are going to be, you know, above 500. They're going to be a little bit better than average or, you know, somewhat better than average. So to me, the, the numbers just aren't adding up right now for the Padres. Uh, they're not mathematically eliminated or anything like that. We know that. But uh, in my mind, they are. I, I just don't, like I said, it would take a 10-game winning streak or better for this team to uh, really put itself in a position to uh, be in the race. And right now, I will say, uh, as I'm – Right now, as we preview this game, uh, the money is coming in on Pittsburgh. I'm showing uh, the Padres were as uh, high an opener as 225, but right now they're down to a dollar 90. Okay. Well, I mean, I really like Lugo. He's been pretty sharp here. Uh, he's conceded two or less runs in the last four outings here, uh, and. Oviedo hasn't necessarily been great, but I kind of just think back to how the uh, Padres have been playing. Usually they find a way to lose this one. I I like the Pirates here uh, on the run line. That's how I'm going to go. Looks like they're sitting at about minus 114. Uh, this is basically just this, uh, this spot play here. Uh, for me. I don't think the Padres get this one by two, but they have showed that they can play here pretty well over the last couple days. So we'll see how this one goes, but I'm going to, I'm going to hedge my bet here, go on the Pirates today. All right. Mindy backing the Pirates uh, with this uh, steam. There's no doubt the, the there's some, uh, some coordinated money coming in right now for whatever reason on the Pirates, uh, maybe for the reasons that Mindy just gave. But, yeah, Oviedo, uh, 4.77 ERA so far and a 5.44 ERA in his last eight starts. And the Pirates have gone 0-7, or he's 0-7 in his last eight starts. And the Pirates are 3-13 and in his last 16 starts. Lugo, uh, the Padres have lost eight of his last 11 starts, but Padres have won five of seven. Uh, uh, at eight and a half under 15, I was uh, thinking premium. I'll just, I'm going to go on the over here with the Pirates and the Padres in this one. Give me the over with Oviedo and Lugo. Padres have gone over in 13 of their last 22. The Pirates have gone over in eight of their last 11. Oviedo's gone over in seven of his last 11 starts. I'll take the over. Mindy's on the Pirates. And we have... Hi, Ron Crawford there. He's giving us his spreadsheet play. And it's Baltimore, so keep that in mind when we uh, uh, get to that game, when we get to the evening games. Thank you, Ron, for stopping by. Appreciate that. <laughs> right? Doubles talking about it's no longer Twitter. I starting to get a feeling that it's still called Twitter. The company is branded X, and the symbol will still look like an X, but it still may be referred to as Twitter. I don't <laughs> Okay, well, who cares? Uh, let's get into the <laughs> picks here. But Dre says San Diego first five run line. Miguel says he likes the over in this one. Jeremy says Pirates minus run and a half. The Weeks is on the over. Clyde Buckley and uh, talking about and oh hey uh, Mindy, just watch out today in this one. Um, yesterday Soto had a home run. Next pitch, uh, 
Perdomo put one in the back of Manny Machado. And, uh, you know, maybe the Padres, they need kind of a rallying moment. And they haven't found anybody that they could kind of, you know, go out and yeah. mix it up with a little bit on the field a little bit and tug on some jerseys and stuff, stuff like that. Don't be surprised if this one has uh, some – uh, the a bench is might empty. I don't think it's going you know, to be a big wall or anything. We don't see that really anymore. And, you know, if you're the Padres, uh, you really want to brawl with the Pirates. I mean, how, how low can you go? So, <laughs> and watch out, uh, PZ. And uh, I would say also, though, make sure we check these lineups today. So uh, maybe Manny will want to be in there because of, of that incident yesterday. But, Padres need something like that. Uh, Butterscotch on the over. Jacoby on the over as well. All right. And Mindy is on the Bucks, and I'm on the over. Here is next up Blue Jays and Dodgers with Kikuchi going up against Gonsolin. Gonsolin is down all the way to minus $1.20. So the move has been on the Blue Jays. The total's 10. All right, Ramon. I'm going to go with the Blue Jays. I think they get the victory in this series here. Uh, they are 29 and 25 straight up on the road. Uh, I kind of feel like as visitors, Kikuchi has been uh, dealing lately, right? Uh, Dodgers only hit uh, left-handed pitchers with a 227 average there as well. And then Gonsolin has just given up a ton of runs. I don't know why he's struggling with command, uh, but he has been. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Blue Jays in the series today. Okay, on the road at even money. And it looks like, I mean, hey, uh, Mindy's our professional handicapper, and that money seems to be coming in early on here. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like the early money is sophisticated money. And it seems to be coming in a little bit here on the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, Gonsolin, you mentioned it, 5.75 in his last four starts is uh, how bad it's been. But still, the Dodgers have won 12 of 17. Uh, Blue Jays has been a pretty solid under. But uh, for me, I'm going to go 10 runs. Uh, look, uh, yesterday the runs came finally, and I think it may continue here. I, I'm going to end up going over in this one, uh, even at 10 runs. Uh, it is interesting. Is it still the reported steam did come in on the under, but the Dodgers have gone over in 16 of their last 22. Blue Jays pretty much just the opposite, really, uh, under in 16 of their last 23, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take over in this one at ten. Uh, don't feel great about it. Would would have you know wasn't gonna be a premium or anything, but I'm gonna try the over here in this one. Okay. Now let's see what the chat had to say with the Blue Jays and the Dodgers. And uh, I see Omar here says, "Give me the Jays and the under." <laughs> Thomas says Blue Jays run line. Luis is on the Jays. Bionic is on the Jays. Butterscotch says give me Dodgers team total over. And Solo on the Dodgers. What is no bottle nine lines, Mindy? That Thomas is saying. Minus, is it a, a autocorrect thing or no? Oh, run line. It's. Oh, here he said it again. What is he saying? Uh, no bottom line. Find no bottom line. All right. Let's keep working on that, Thomas. I'm trying to make it. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> Where can you find no? Okay. Uh, Fernando on the Blue Jays money line. Dre likes the over. Jacoby says, give me Blue Jays money um, line. Okay. Oh, is he Where got He's saying that the home team will win it basically in the eighth. So there's no going to be bottom of nine inning, uh, you know. At, at oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, here's the thing about that, and that's something that certainly, you know, is often just, you know, mentioned. Hey, Leroy, nice to see you here is on the over. 
And I don't know if Thomas is saying because of that. And if you ruled them out, you'd be ruling out half of your overs, right, every time. But um, could be argued that it's actually factored into the line uh, every time, every single time, I would think. Because uh, you're gonna you're gonna have a favorite, and, uh, and the favorite should be up, right? If you have uh, a home favorite that's minus two hundred, they are uh, less likely to take their their uh, at bat. But if they're minus one twenty here, uh, I would say that in a situation like this, they're probably forty uh, percent, forty per, like in a minus one twenty, you could win it in the bottom of the ninth. Maybe what? Um, Oh, I wouldn't even be right, but I'd have to say it's at least 20% of the 20 20% 20 of the, the, the nonetheless, the closer the game, the more chance you're gonna have to uh take your last at bet uh, as a favorite at, at in the in the ninth inning. So okay. All right. Um uh, PZ says it's five hundred degrees out there in LA. Yeah, it's supposed to be another roasty one, I guess. Here's the Orioles and the Phillies of the good series. And it's Bradish do pretty well. Bradish is pretty good. Uh, Mindy, I think he's been really key to the Orioles' success. Ranger Suarez, though, is favored in this one, $1.15. And the total, nine and, a half, nine and a half under 15. This one did get steamed over. Yeah, you talked about uh, Bradish. He has the ERA under one in his last three starts and wow. a K rate of nearly uh, 10 per nine innings on the road. And then Suarez, we've talked about him. I, I mean, I really like the guy, but he's kind of struggled a little bit at home here with that ERA. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go on the Orioles today. Uh, I think they're sitting, yeah, maybe right at even money here today, taking the Orioles. So I agree with Ron today. That's right, Ron. Uh, gave, yeah. Hey, if that's look before I was already uh, solidly on the play. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what happened. I'm sure Ron won. Yeah. <laughs> well, what happened on that game the other day? I'm sure Ron got the better of us. I don't even remember. So, uh, to be fair, um, maybe we won. Maybe he won. No, no skin. But in this one, I'll go with Ron. Come on, let's go. Let's take the Orioles. I want to take the Orioles. I, I like Bradish. Uh, that's. Um, I don't want to, you know, make it too simple. But I like Bradish, and this is still a big series. It's simple, uh, right? I said sometimes it's just simple, right? Well, uh, you mentioned it. He's been hot. Uh, what is one point six nine er? Yeah, it's insane. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Orioles have won 13 of 17 now. Suarez, uh, 6.43 ERA in his last four starts. And remember the Red Hot Phillies? They've lost five of their last seven now. It happened. Uh, all of a sudden. So take the Orioles here in this one. Baltimore, second best road team in baseball. Say it every time. And uh, let's take the Orioles here with Bradish. And see what the chat's up to. Uh, O's for Omar. The Omar O's. There we go. And Jamal's on the Phillies. Thomas is on Baltimore. Michael Thompson early today. He says Baltimore. <clears throat> Trey says O's will get this one. Luis, he's saying over, but he could just be saying oh. Right. <laughs> Bionics on the O's. Oh, okay, Ron. Well, <clears throat> you, you would not. Uh, Scotch says Baltimore's is Scotch Lock, Mindy. Okay. I like it. I like it. Mike Allison's on Baltimore. Leroy, Baltimore. Lots of Baltimore support here today. Solo on the under. Jacoby's on Baltimore. I want Bradish. Let's do it. Consensus play, number five. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> All right, the Angels, are they going to come back today after what happened? Uh, this one 
moving closer to a pick em, I think the Tigers are probably taking a little bit of money here. I'll still call the Angels a slight favorite. Total eight and a half under 15 with uh, Sandoval and Lorenzen in this one. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if you guys uh, watched that one or not, but, uh, you know, I don't want to name any names. There was a certain Angels outfielder that misplayed a ball and then got picked off at third all in the same inning. Uh, so that was kind of the downfall of that uh, Angels team there in extras. Uh, but I'm going to go back on him today. I haven't really been a Sandoval fan here uh, much at all, but I think it's more of I'm kind of uh, fading Lorenzen here today. Uh, historically versus the Angels, Lorenzen uh, gives up a 437 batting average, a 471 slugging percentage, only a 13% K rate. Uh, and Sandoval likes to pitch against the Tigers. He has a 34% K rate uh, and a 279 slugging percentage. So I think this is a spot for uh, Sandoval to have a good day here. Uh, and hopefully we go late innings so we don't have to deal with any Angels bullpen. I think the spot's right for the Angels. I think the problem I have is that Lorenzen's been hot. He's been basically one of the best stretches of his entire career oh, right now. His entire career. 18-scoreless inning streak right now over his last three starts, three victories. But uh, I – want the angels here they've won seven of their last nine all of a sudden um it's nearly a pick em. I, I want to agree with you I'm, I'm gonna agree with i'm gonna go with the angels uh despite lorenzen's hot streak here uh in this one and right. let's see if the chat um yeah Oh, I see some Detroits out there. I see some. Oh, Wapik. Wapik is here. Where have you been, Wapik? It's nice to see you again here in the chat. Yeah, it's been a while. Omar on the under here. Dre says, give me first five run line with Detroit. Bionic does take the Angels with us. Jamal says Tigers run line. That doesn't uh, – well, let's see. I mean, uh, I think the Tigers are probably laying – Plus one and a half at my, yeah, so they're getting the, uh, uh, Scott says go under. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Solo gave out his name. I didn't want to say it. No, I will. I didn't either because I'm actually, I don't know. I've never mentioned, I'm a pretty big Mickey Moniac fan. I'm uh, from La Costa Canyon High in San Diego, number one draft pick. Uh, covered a little bit of there. Uh, so, you know, I, I do like, I mean, uh, look, he's a number one draft pick. Maybe he should be better at this. Maybe not. I don't know. He got here pretty quick. Consider, it took a couple of years, certainly. But the way he's hit, what does he got? 15 home runs, something like 14, 15 home runs. So yeah, he's been decent, right? Look, uh, that was a rough, rough situation, especially the defensive play. Um, yeah, that was pretty bad. But, I mean, you get turned around sometimes. So, I mean, it happens. Just, But then just getting picked off at third was, you know, not great. And the trade to the Angels was the best was the best thing that uh, happened to Mickey Boniak. I mean, he, you know, uh, he wasn't going to be doing anything in Philadelphia. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, so Leroy is here and he says go over in that one. Ron wants to go under in this one. I would think under. I mean, I'm this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a low scoring game with the Angels winning. Yep. Luis is on the under here. Jeremy says, Give me Tigers first five. And Jacoby says, Tigers on the run line. Yeah, Tigers have gone under in nine of their last 14. Angels has been, have been hitting pretty good, but Sandoval under in eight of his last 10 starts. So, all right, let's do it, Mindy. Let's, let's – on the Angels, I, I, look, I like what uh, Lorenzen's been doing, but uh, Angels are playing well again. It, it, it's time. I mean, they're, you know, it's probably over for them too, long been over, but they could – you know, put something together. These teams got to put something together. Mets and Yankees in this one. It's, uh, well, a couple of a couple of pitchers have had some adventures with their health. Just say uh, the Quintana least. And Rodon, uh, Rodon $1.50. Uh, total here is eight and a half and moving higher here. 
Um, I'm going to call it eight and a half flat because I, I, I'm sure that's where it's headed. I don't know if it's heading north of eight and a half, but uh, right now I'm showing pretty much eight and a half flat. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead and be on Quintana and the Mets. I don't actually have him uh, that he's pitched on the road yet. I don't know if that's uh, an error in my numbers here or not. Uh, but Rodon has pitched better at home than his 7.36 average there overall. Uh, but if I take a look at Quintana, right, historically uh, a ground ball pitcher, uh, only allowed eight home runs last season. And that's one of those things that I think the Yankees are having trouble uh, being able to just produce uh, runs, uh, just not getting it into spots where they can produce it. They're always been the long ball hitters. And if they don't do that, uh, they're having issues. And then I still don't know what's going on with Rizzo. I don't know. He's like, five for 40, something like that. I mean, still coming up with bases loaded and striking out. He's not even getting close to putting this ball uh, in play here. I don't like the Mets offense really much at all, but they're the ones that seem to be producing here in the series. Uh, so that's how I'm going to go. Rodon gives up a 540 slugging percentage versus the Mets and hasn't been sharp. Uh, give me the Mets. Yeah, no, um, you're right, Mindy, as far as Quintana, he has just made the one start because okay. of his situation. So Rodon's only had three starts so far and a you know, seven ERA. So they've lost all three of those games. So I, I don't know if I want to see more from Quintana. He did give up just two runs in five and a third innings, 77 pitches, but the Mets failed to win uh, that game. Uh, I would think these two pitchers could end up struggling here, and I'm going to end up on the over here for sure in this one. Yankees have gone over and for their last five. Mets have been going uh, under pretty steady uh, of late, but uh, even in uh, the Bronx, I'm going to go over here in this one. And, uh, yeah, you know, Rizzo a couple nights ago did have the big hit. Um, he kind of yeah, sheepishly, or whatever yeah. Like so, but you could see it. He, he, you know, look, he knows he's struggling because he was, you know, as the Yankees were celebrating, he was kind of like, you know, you could see him a uh, little bit of relief on his face and in his shoulders in the uh, congratulatory line because he was able to come through uh, with uh, with the big uh, play. So. All right. Yeah, good point there on that uh, with the Angels that uh, maybe it's rest day, double say, says. So we'll see. But uh, you know, sometimes it's a lot in those day games, but anytime on getaway day. So Leroy on the Angels here. Uh, Omar says he likes the Mets. He thinks there's value here at that big plus money, uh, I would think is the way he's suggesting it. Jamal is on the Mets. Dre, Mets team total over. Solo on the under here. Hot boy, says Mets. Butterscotch is on the Mets. Luis is on the under. Clyde Buckley says go over. Thomas Lewis, Mets money line. <laughs> just, jumped up, just jumped up there like that? Yes, uh, sure did. Uh, the dog was not happy. He came into the room, and then look what happened. Here he comes jumping right at my face. This is not going to work out. That's all I know. They need to give me space. All right, Mindy, taking the Mets in this one. I'm going to take the over here. And uh, Yankees definitely had some, you know, some things to be concerned with. After yesterday, uh, Leroy Mets. I think that I think he's saying team total under. I think is what he's suggesting there. Oh no, that can't be right because he does. He has Mets. Well, I guess he could have those both, but those don't correlate. So, I'm thinking I'm just misreading. Oh, that's uh, Leroy a uh, Leroy Akins. <laughs> Leroy. They both have the brown L. Right. <laughs> um, what a coincidence. Never been able to figure out why everybody yeah. gets the color on their letter. Uh, Miguel here, Mets, lots of Mets. Okay. All right. Mindy on the Mets. I'm on the over. Let's continue on. Hello, hello, hello to 
Sherrod is here today. Let's get set. Let's get it. Braves and Red Sox with Strider and Bayo in this one. Of course, the Braves are going to be a pretty big favorite yesterday, though, Mindy, the Red Sox. How about it? Uh, we yep. we lost. I'm not rubbing it in because we 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 were on the Braves together, but um, good on the Red. Good for the Red Sox. Uh, uh, Braves were never in it yesterday. Yeah, I mean it was a, a good for the Red Sox. I didn't really see it coming, especially Early they won uh, so decisively. Right, like you said, not even uh, in it. I think uh, it's gonna be. Uh, you know, I like Bayo. I like what he's been doing. And then we have uh, Strider, though, coming in where he's been averaging the 9Ks a game. Uh, I just kind of feel like we still have the better pitcher here today on the Braves. Uh, that's how I'm going to go. Taking the Braves here on the money line. Oh, yeah. I mean, Strider is so good. It's just hard not to want to, you know, play him every time because you don't feel like you're going to get cheated. Uh, to a certain extent, right? You never feel like he's going to get knocked out of the game right <laughs> now. He's one of the best uh, going. Yeah, he's got an ERA close to four right now in his last three starts, and it's continuing to go higher a little bit. Maybe there's some, you know, wear there. He's still a young pitcher, but I do favor the – oh, Mindy. Arr. Gosh, that's a high pr- that is a high price. <laughs> mm. Struggling with it. If you want to take minus 155 or not. No, I don't. After that. Maybe they would have won yesterday's game is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, I'm going to end up here. Look at that. Wow. Got a dollar fifty-five. Let me go to the chat. I'm, I'm all right. I'm, all right. Let's see who can convince it. you. I mean, I'm it's not, not, bad. Look, one, it's not him. One game's not going to, you know, switch it for the Braves, right? For me, right? Uh, just because it's a loss to the uh, Red Sox. I mean, the Red Sox. Hey, Red Sox are still all right. Uh, uh, but Scotch has Boston. Uh, how about that? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, I, but that, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Mindy on the Braves, and I'm going to take Red okay. Sox run line. All right. Kind of a uh, challenge. We've never have done that. Been. I don't know. Yeah, I think we did it once. Ron says Low Braves got to bounce back. All right. right. Yeah. That price, Ron. Price, minus 120, yeah. Yeah. Thomas on the over. Dre says he likes a Yurphy. Uh, uh, Strider's allowed a first inning run in just four of 20 starts. Him and Gallo. Yeah, Bayo is uh, four of 16. So I don't know what the price there, but uh, basically Strider 20% Yurphy and Bayo 25% Yurphy. So, yeah. Don't know what the price is there, but you're going to need a nice price, right? Bionic on the Braves. Strider over K-Prop here for doubles. Jamal on the Braves. Solo on the under. Leroy Aiken says Braves money line. Jacoby Braves. Ron says yeah, maybe just too high the line. and maybe a Mike on the Braves. Okay. Um, looks like you guys are pretty heavy on the Braves. I'm gonna take that Red Sox run line, and all uh, right, right. yeah, kind of was. I'm not even gonna talk about the total right now (laughs) because might have a premium there. Okay, Rangers and oh, let me see. Yeah, Rangers and Astros. Give me the Rangers and the Astros here with Haney and Valdez. In this one, it's Valdez now a dollar seventy-five, eight and a half under fifteen. 
Well, goodness, what are we going to do here in this one? I mean, the Astros have been playing pretty well. The Rangers have been playing pretty well. The Rangers team averaging 5.4 runs of offense. This Astro team uh, 4.29. Um, I think it comes down to uh, Valdez. I think he's going to be the victor here in this one. I'm taking the Astros. I'll probably just take them. Um, here on the money line, sitting at what was it, minus 175 now? Oh, uh, cool. yeah, I mean, I know it's not great, but uh, Texas is the one that they're having trouble a little bit with starting pitching, they rank 16th in team uh, ERA. Plus, I really like this Astros bullpen to close it out. Taking the Astros today, okay, Mindy, take the Astros in this one. Uh, pretty high price. It is. Uh, well, well, but here's the thing. Um, this one's going to be, uh, I don't know if it's going to be a runaway favorite, but the news is already, you know, pretty much uh, starting to spread and come out. Al we knew it was coming. Alvarez is uh, upgraded to questionable for the game. Altuve, he's questionable for the game. Uh, questionable for in this case means it's good news because these right. guys have been out for a long time. So uh, could tonight be the night for these two guys to get back into the lineup? That's what it kind of feels like to me is going to happen. Uh, I, I think this is a – I don't know. Today, it was the kind of the target date, so – uh, we'll see Haney 5.89 ERA in his last five. I figure this. I, I don't. I don't even like the number, but I'm going over uh, at eight and a half. I, my model's a definite is kind of about eight over. So, I, but I like over in this one with the Rangers. Uh, they've gone over in four of their last five. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the over. See if those guys are back tonight. I'm going to put it out as kind of a free play there a little bit as I think what I'm doing. Um, no, it's no secret. It's not even confirmed yet. So Right. Um, Sherrod says, give me the Rangers here in this one. Dre says, Houston, first five money line. Le Leroy is saying Rangers over. Omar says, Rangers, first five. And Thomas is on the under, but Solo's on the over. A little bit of back and forth here in this one. And uh, Butterscotch is on the run line. Bionic on the under. And Ron says, watch out, Texas. They beat up on these left-handers. And he's got, uh, they're at 130 weighted runs created against the lefties. So uh, Luis says Texas. Nice, Daryl. That's awesome. Uh, looking <laughs> forward to hearing about uh, some FIBA World Cup basketball. And, uh, yeah, Canada wrapped up that women's game 2-1. to one. Over for Jacoby, and Michael says take over as well. And uh, I will. Take okay. the over in this one. Even if those guys aren't back tonight, I'm looking to go over here. And we have the meats. So we have the meats. Mm -hmm. I should go try their breakfast today because I've never tried the Arby's breakfast, but I see that they have it on oh, the menu. Do have, oh. Okay, I don't want that, I don't think. You don't think you want Arby's breakfast? No, but actually I've heard uh, the reviews have been strong on that Wagyu burger. And I, I'm i like, if I go to Arby's, I want my roast beef. Why do right. I want it's a burger? Kind of the same way. I'm kind of the same way. Yeah. Uh, Ron talked about Garcia. Wasn't he the one that was uh, at the plate last night, right? Uh, the young double. kid? Yeah. At the at the last uh, at bat, I'm trying to remember. It was only a few hours ago, right? I mean, how are these you know these days? I mean, I am barely coherent with you at this point, Mindy. After hey, you know, watching you the trying Dodger, to hold back my yawn all morning, right? Watching the Dodger game and watching some WNBA uh, up late, soccer, and then now hey, you know getting up early. These guys are waking up. They got to play the game in a couple of hours, and I'm beat. 
All right. Cubs and White Sox. This will be uh, here, Strowman and Lynn. And in this one, it's the Cubs minus $1.15, nine, ooh, nine under 15. So uh, this one's gotten steamed up to the over here a little bit. All right. It looks like I'm going to go with the chat. It looks like we got uh, doubles with the Cubs. We got Sherrod here with the Cubs. You got Mindy with the Cubs. Uh, I think Strowman's definitely the better pitcher in this matchup. He's been a little sluggish at times, but again, I think this is one where he gets uh, back on track, Ramon. Um, I like the price, minus 120 for him as well, versus Lynn that struggled, 6.11 ERA at home. That's a lot, uh, plus a 479 slugging percentage. The Cubs are going to rock Lance Lynn today. Give me the Cubs. Uh, go Cubs, go. They put it on him yesterday. I had an under in that game because I – like Hendricks, but uh, uh, you know he did he did his job, I think. And uh, the Cubs, uh, I like him in this spot uh, against Lynn. Whatever Lynn's problem is at this point, I don't know if it's fixable. He's uh, got he's consistent, all right. He's consistent with that six ERA at this <laughs> point. White Sox have lost uh, thirteen of their last eighteen games. And, well, the Cubs have won six of seven now. And could this be Strowman's last start for the Cubs? Or Cubs are Cubs. I'm just I'm saying it like that because I know we've yeah. got some just Cubs uh, followers in the chat. And maybe they'll give their feelings on what the Cubs are going to do here this weekend on the trade deadline. All right, uh, here is doubles. Cubs are hot. K prop as well. Sherrod on the Cubs. And Luis on the White Sox. Bionic on the Cubs. Omar says, okay, lean there. Thomas, give me a Yurfi, he says. Give me that Yurfi. Lynn is allowed a run in the first inning in nine of 20 starts. That's what you're looking for in a year fee. Uh, but Stroman, uh, he's practically the opposite. He's actually one of the best in the major leagues. He's allowed a first inning run in just two of 21 starts this season. Um, got a home run prop from Scott. He also likes his Cubs today. We're on the Cubs, Mindy. All right. Let's do it. I don't know. You know, I want to show everybody's play. Uh, Double says, don't trade him. And Scott says, yep, he's out of here. Oh, man. We'll see. All right, we're on the Cubs. You believe they're giving up the Cubs. They, they could still win the NL. Come on now. <laughs> and uh, Ron there talking about how uh, White Sox as a home dog, right? Seven Ooh, minus 970 units. Yeah, yeah, seven and 17 actually. And as a, a favorite, they're like 14 and nine. So, it, you know, it really the line will usually tell with the White Sox. And there's been a slight move here basically to the to the Cubs. Uh, they may have been favored the whole time. I mean, there's some. Uh, send outs that showed it was a pick em, but I don't know if that was ever indeed truly the case. Thank you, Jared, for turning us on to a play at the spa today. Jamal went on the Cubs, by the way. Jeremy said, give me the socks on the run line. First five. All right, we're on the Cubs here to keep it rolling. All right, last game up. Uh, let me just check to see if the pitching has come in because I – the line has come in, so I think we know the pitching, but uh, I think what's been happening on, on this particular uh, matchup where we see the line come in, right, and then we see the pitcher who it looks like it's going to be Alex Wood, but the Giants, when Wood has started a few of them, I believe he's ended up with an opener like Brevia or somebody like that. So. Okay. Um, I'm going to just put wood in here. 
I don't think it's even listed yet. Any the line is starting to come out. It's like uh, two twenty five. Let me see what it is actually. Uh, Giants two thirty eight and a half over fifteen. I'm also showing two fifty nine under twenty. So uh, right in there and. Uh, so it may be wood. It may be an opener here uh, in this one, Mindy. Nonetheless, it's I don't know why I'm just belaboring it. It's still the A's and the Giants. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I expected the Giants to come out and be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, more up for that one yesterday. You know, you had talked about uh when the giants played the tigers that they might come out flat being that one game then having to travel uh across country there the next day maybe they're a little bit sluggish here still uh and if it is wood he hasn't been pitching great at home 6.15 era uh now hogan harris hasn't been great either uh but i don't want to do anything right now with uh, the giants and their lack of offense um, at minus 225. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the A's. Um, I'm going to take the run line. Again, they're minus 150. Well, they would probably be minus 130 now-ish. Um, I'm going to take the A's here on the run line. All right, Mindy, and I'll take the challenge in this one. I'll lay the challenge. challenge. All right. Yeah, we, we got to have one. We haven't had one in a right. couple of weeks. Uh, I don't think. That other one probably, yeah, it doesn't count. Come on. This is a challenge. <laughs> I'm just concerned. I like, I was thinking to me, maybe under here in this one, but if it's going to be, let's see, at eight and a half, the only thing that bothered me, I would just look at the umpire assignments here, and uh, uh, Wolf uh, scheduled me the umpire. He's gone nine, uh, uh, over in nine of his last 10, and I really was thinking under in this game at eight and a half. Uh, uh, Harris hasn't been too swift. We know that, but uh, 6.11, the ERA um, doesn't really go that deep very often. And for Wood, 6.75 in his last four games, maybe that over is starting to be a little uh, more. I, I would just want to see more because this information, you know, this game just really starting to come online as far as the betting is concerned, the books. Uh, DraftKings, I think, has might be the only one of the only books to have it up at this point. So we'll see, but the line should be right about there. I'll take the Giants tonight. Run line, Mindy. I'll take them. The A's on the run line. See what the chat does with this one. Then we'll get to our WNBA winner, whatever it's going to be. <laughs> right. Maybe we'll we're be taking a winner. That's all we're doing. About two plays. I don't know. Mm, maybe. We'll Luis is on the A's. And the solo is on the A's money line. Uh, let's see in there about uh, Butterscotch talking about, you know, trades to beef up the, the farm system and, and, you know, acquiring young talent. I saw a little bit of controversy, you know, with you these some of these big name talking heads, uh, one in particular, was talking on a national network show saying, well, you know, they could trade, if they're going to trade this particular player, they'd need five first round draft choices. Oh my, five, huh? Well, apparently, Mindy, uh, he was so well researched in it that uh, in Major League Baseball, you can't trade your draft choices. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They've got some, uh, I guess you can, but there's some, I don't know, I don't even know the rules, but. But it's uh, anyway, not that feasible, huh? Fasting him on that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Harris for the A's. I think that's agreed there. And uh, Wood, but it could be an opener sometimes for Wood. Uh, Jared, Oakland run line. Butterscotch run line. Thomas Lewis, Oakland run line. They're all with you, Mindy. Nobody wants it here <laughs> <laughs> with me. <laughs> uh, Nobody look. wants it. Not yeah. for sale. Giants came yeah. back to win that game. Look, A's play, you know, it was a good game. You know, Giants had to come back a little bit, right? Uh, yeah. All right, let's we'll see. I'm wondering about the real long time, right? My spreadsheet shows Oakland 65 to 57. Thanks, That's Jimmy. Great. You know, I appreciate you. On so the run much. line. Okay, probably is my guess, right? 
Appreciate you so much, Jim. Great to see you. Honored that, honored that you're here today. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Uh, Oakland, Butterscotch, he always loves that two, that plus two and a half. Right. Minus 170 is like not so bad. Yeah. And uh, I've, I've been, don't give that on the air. Usually we stick to the one and a half, but I've gone to that two and a half uh, enough, even with the A's. I've, I've, I've done it. Okay. Jared on. Uh, Oakland run line, given the price. Maybe he's just given the price there of that run line. Thomas will be with me, though. Me and Thomas, you know, you we have our uh, clashes on our opinions with some of our games, but I bet you when we're on it together, Dre, Oakland run line, Jacoby, I think that means A's on the money line. 